I'm Dr. Nigel Abraham, and I'm the Scientific Director for Omega Diagnostics. And I'd like to talk to you about the importance of gut integrity. Now, we cannot overstate the importance of optimal gut health to our overall health and well-being. Hippocrates himself said that all disease begins in the gut. And that statement has never been more true than it is today, with a huge explosion of research into the gut microbiome and the overall role that our gut plays in health and disease. Now, the nutrients absorb during digestion fuel every organ in our body and their respective functions. The intestinal tract forms a defensive barrier from what, the, what we ingest, and it prevents harmful substances from reaching the bloodstream. If this barrier is compromised in any way, those harmful substances are able to get past and inflammation will be triggered. Inflammation can negatively affect just about all body systems in many ways and is associated with the development of chronic conditions. Now, our intestinal mucosa has a very difficult job. On one hand, it has to absorb all those essential nutrients that we need. But at the same time, it has to exclude toxins and larger molecules. So any breach of that mucosa will very quickly lead to malabsorption and increased exposure to toxins and antigens, leading to abnormal immune responses. Now, this is not a new concept. It is a very well studied phenomenon. And we know that intestinal diseases in, with increased permeability to large molecules, such as the food that we eat, do and have an important role in exacerbating inappropriate immune responses. So we have this model now where we have increased permeability, which is often characterized by high levels of specific IgG antibodies to the food that we're eating. And this is due to a whole range of environmental factors, chronic infections, physical inactivity and obesity, dysbiosis, that important role that the microbiome plays, diet or more specifically poor diets, isolation and chronic stress. We can never underestimate the importance of stress, including to optimal gut health and function, disturbed sleep, and the widespread use of medications. All of this and more can lead to systemic chronic inflammation. And this type of inflammation is at the root of just about every 21st century chronic disease. So if we are able to lower this inflammation by targeting right at the beginning, looking at the foods which are triggering inflammation and removing them from the diet, we can go a long way to helping these conditions. Signs of leaky gut are many and varied. Just about all body systems can be impacted. Irritable bowel syndrome is probably one of the most studied areas. Malabsorption of nutrients, of course. Mood issues, the link between the way our brain functions and the gut is becoming more and more of interest as in research. Autoimmune diseases, perhaps a good example of that is thyroid issues. It is believed that autoimmune thyroid disease is triggered by a toxin from gut origin. Inflammatory skin disorders, even difficulty in losing weight where calorie restriction doesn't seem to be the answer. And all of these are characteristics of food sensitivity, i.e. where we are loss of tolerance, which is characterized by high levels of food specific IgG antibodies. So in a healthy gut, the cells lining the gut form a physical barrier. And this prevents exposure of our gut immune system to any of the potential toxins and antigens that are flowing through our gut on a regular basis. Contrast that now to a damaged gut. We see now that large molecules, including the food that we eat, can literally fall down through damaged cells. And now they're exposed to the immune system, triggering uh, the IgG antibody response. 
These macromolecules will also fall down between the cells as these tight junctions have become opened up and damaged. This very quickly leads to the formation of immune complexes. This is food antigens at the core with specific IgG antibodies bound to them, which has enough power to trigger the complement pathway. And because this system now overloads the immune system, this will trigger inflammation and the diseases that are consequences of that. We also tend to see that these type junction proteins often get released into the circulation as part of the damage that is caused. And it is a growing interest in measuring these things, such as zonulin, as an indicator that this process is occurring. So now we have set up autoimmunity, inflammation, and of course, food sensitivity. But I am often asked, how do we know for sure that this process is actually happening? Well, I recently came across this rather nice piece of research where the researchers took diluted food antigens to people who were sensitive to those foods or intolerant to those foods and administered them directly into the duodenal mucosa by using a high powered endoscope to act as a, a, like a microscope. And they found that within five minutes of putting these positive diluted foods into the gut, that we were already seeing epithelial leaks and gaps and damages. What we can see here is breaks in the cell wall, which is the, the white arrows, through which a fluorescein dye leaks out into the gut lumen. At the same time, the spaces in between the cells became significantly widened, as we demonstrated in the previous slide. There's also another factor which I believe is important, and that is the presence of activated mast cells. Mast cells are traditionally involved in IgE-mediated allergies, but increasing research is showing that mast cells present in the gut can also be activated by IgG immune complexes. And this is important because activated mast cells do play an important role in both the normal physiology of the gut processes, but also in the various factors that go into IBS. For example, activated mast cells lead to visceral hypersensitivity and dysmotility, altered intestinal fluid secretion, mucosal immune dysregulation, and most importantly of all, disturbed mucosal barrier. And a number of studies have been able to show this. This was looking at uh, GI problems in patients, and the researchers found that there was indeed a high level of activated mast cells through IgG uh, immune complexes. And one of the things that happens with activated mast cells is they release chemicals that is able to disturb those tight junctions we talked about, which leads to even more permeability and the influx of more inflammatory triggering molecules. What these researchers found in common with most diets is that if you give the patient a diet based on their highest IgG responses or the most reactive foods, they found that the GI symptoms were significantly improved in 74% of patients, even at a one-year follow-up. So personalized exclusion diets guided by food-specific IgG antibody assessments combined with various strategies to help heal and repair the gut can have a significant positive impact on health and well-being. Thanks for watching.